Pork, pork, pork! What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So excuse me for my sort of hoarse voice right now. I just got back a few days ago from this last Milsim West event where I spent the entire weekend yelling at my guys to charge push the hill. Down. And go, plus go, go, go. I was outside all weekend. Up, it was a little up, rainy, it was a little cold, so I might've caught something, but we're gonna power through it today because I really want to share my experience from this last event and how I sort of changed my loadout and my game style for a Milsim yeah. West event. So for those of you who do not know what Milsim West is, Milsim West is a continuous 40 hour military simulation airsoft event where you can pick between two different factions, one being NATO, which is all the multi-cam wearing guys like the US forces and their allies versus Rus4, which is the opposite team. They're obviously supposed to be the Russians. So if you go in like Russian kit and Russian impressions and under Rus4, there's also militia. So if you don't have Russian kit, but still wanna be on like that side, all you have to do is dress up like some type of, you know, Eastern Bloc shit bag dressed in poop kit. If you go militia, don't come looking like a gooner, just buy the worst kit possible and run like a bare bones AK and you'll look the part. Now for these events, we use airsoft guns like this Arcturus AK-12 that you see here for our force on force components. So airsoft guns are the primary means of killing the enemy at a Milsim West event. We also have airsoft pyrotechnics that you can use, you know, like grenades, grenade launchers, stuff like that. But another thing that we offer at Milsim West, which really differentiates it from other event promoters out there, especially here in the United States, is we allow uh, something a little bit spicier. Real guns shooting blanks. That is right, we allow players with prior approval and following the steps I'm gonna be going over in this video to run a real firearm like this PSA AK-103 that you see here to have a BFA on it and run blank fire ammunition to really help add to the immersion factor of our events. In my opinion, this is the thing that really differentiates Milsim West from other event promoters out there. It really helps add to the immersion of the event because to be quite honest guys, airsoft guns sound kind of lame. They do not sound like real guns at all and they do not sound scary. For example, if it is two o'clock in the morning and you hear a bunch of blank fire going off in the distance and you know it's your friendly patrol base getting hit, that gets your blood pumping a little bit more than hearing a bunch of airsoft guns if you even hear that off in the distance. And it really makes it feel like there's actual like combat going on. And I will say, any of the Milsim West footage that I have, and there's a guy who's next to me or around me shooting blanks, it makes that footage like 10 times better than if it's just a bunch of people going like pew, 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 with like a stupid airsoft gun. A perfect example of this is at an insurgency event last year where we did this really badass drive-by where I was laying in the back of a pickup truck with an airsoft crank and the guy next to me in the back had an RPK, but the guys inside the truck, inside the cab, were both using uh, blank fire guns. When we did this really badass drive-by on this group of uh, terrorists and <laughs> I had to like put in the video like description like this is not real footage this isn't something from live leak this is airsoft that is blank fire but it really did look realistic and super badass and it's some of the best footage i've ever gotten so blank fire just makes everything better now other than making noise and adding to the immersion of the event what is the purpose of running a blank fire gun at milsom west like what are the tactical uses of a blank fire gun and that is what we're going to be trying to go over today my experience running a blank fire AK at the last Milsim West event and some of the things that really help add to the experience of the overall game and how a blank fire gun and being a blank fire gunner can be also an asset to your platoon. And in my opinion, I think that platoons and squads that have a blank fire gun in them are stronger squads for it and can do things that an airsoft gun cannot. Now, before this last event, I've never ran a blank fire gun at a Milsim West event. I've always ran airsoft guns at those events because airsoft guns are the primary means of killing the enemy out there. But 
At this event, I really wanted to try and take advantage of the advantages uh, that a blank fire gun provides over an airsoft gun. Now you might be asking yourself, Nick, what good is a blank fire gun? Can you actually even you know, kill people with it? How does the hit calling work for blank fire? But just like airsoft, it is an honor system. We do not require people to call blank fire hits. What we do require is that if you are being engaged by a blank fire user in a realistic type of distance, you need to react to that blank fire. You do not need to call the hits but you do need to at least react as if you are being shot at by a high caliber rifle. That being said, if a blank fire user is engaging you and it is clear on, that he got the here. drop on you and you would be very much dead, like you're within BB distance and you're running across open ground, it is highly encouraged that you take that hit. That guy like wasted his entire paycheck to try to kill you with blank fire ammunition. So it is highly encouraged that you take that hit. Do you have to? No, but at least react. Yeah! Ah! Running! Uh, uh, it's you, it's you. Uh. I didn't want to. Давай! Прикрой меня, давай! Blank fire guns are really designed to take a lot of the airsoftisms out of the game. So what we encountered at the last event is that it was just rolling hills and there would be often times where you could see the enemy on the hilltop next to you, which was very close and just out of BB range. So it turned into that whole thing where it's like, hey, fuck you, no, fuck you. And it's, it's kind of lame because if it was real life, you'd just be shooting at each other with rifles. But if there's a blank fire guy there, those guys can't just stand there and just be like, hey, what's going on? If they're being engaged by a blank fire guy, they have to react and get on their bellies. Another cool thing about blank fire guns is signaling. So I almost consider these things to be more like signaling devices than weapons, even though some people will call blank fire hits. They're few and far between. At this last event, there are a ton of guys who were actually calling blank fire hits, which you will see here shortly in the gameplay video later on in this video. But what I mean by signaling is if I have guys using blank guns, it is a lot easier for me to understand where the action is happening. So let's say there's a guy with a blank fire gun at the rear of the formation and we get hit back there and he turns around and starts blasting at the enemy with his blank fire gun. I'm gonna have a much easier time at the front of the formation understanding what's going on back there versus if everyone's using airsoft guns and I can't hear anything. Because depending on the terrain, I might not even hear it back there and they could be like wrecking an entire squad back there without me even knowing. So with blank fire guns, it's a lot easier to understand where the action is happening even across the AO. For example, at this last event, I did like a little recce patrol with like two other guys and we ran into an entire NATO squad and I started shooting and breaking contact with the blank fire guns. And while this was happening, I was getting radios from my patrol base asking me what was going on. Versus, which I was like a mile away, if I was using an airsoft gun, there's no way they would have heard me. But since I was shooting at them with blanks, they heard all this gunfire, and they're like, what the fuck is going on out there? Also, with me breaking contact with the blanks, it was forcing our pursuers to stop and actually like take cover and allowing us to run back versus just them sprinting after us with airsoft guns to get in range. But when I was engaging them with a blank fire gun, they were having to do like, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down and it was really slowing them down and allowed us to break away. So now that we've talked about the tactical uses of a blank fire gun at Milsom West, let's talk about how you actually go about getting one of these guns to the event and running it there. Cause there's a few things that you have to go through before you even step off. So before you leave home, make sure that you have the appropriate gear for your faction and to run blank. So as you can see here, I have an AK 100 series rifle. So this would be perfect for Rust Force slash militia. So the gun looks correct and the BFA is correct too. So this is a correct BFA for a AK-100 or an AK-74 style rifle. So you wanna make sure that you have the correct BFA for your gun as well as for the blank fire ammunition that you're using. For example, if you're using like an old military style M4 BFA, which kind of sucks, and you try using movie blank fire ammunition out of that thing, 
it's gonna fly off. So you wanna make sure that you're using the correct BFA with the correct ammunition. Now that you've made sure that you have everything you need to run blanks safely at our events, the next thing you need to do is contact your cadre after signing up for our events and let him know that you are planning on running blanks and we will run a background check on you. And the background check is just to make sure that we are letting the right people in to our events to run real guns. The background check takes hardly any time at all. So once that is good to go, you're clear to go to our event with your gun and your ammunition and at the last event, we actually filmed the entire blank fire check-in procedure. So this will show you as a blank fire guy, everything that you need to go through and know before you're actually cleared to go into the game. So let's check it out. All right guys, so now we're gonna get into the blank fire check-in process. And the first thing that we're going to do when you approach the blank fire check-in is have the blank fire check-in guy check the ammo that is in your plastic container or in a clear plastic bag or the original boxes of ammo that the ammo came in. So now we're gonna do that. We wanna check that the ammo is in its original packaging, like you see here. As you can see, it is all bling fire ammo. And what we're doing here, guys, is we're inspecting that all the ammunition that a blank fire user is bringing in is not live ammo. And we're looking for a very safe environment out here. So all of these checks and precautions are for everybody's safety. We don't want anybody bringing out live ammo and we think that the blank fire um, aspect to these games really adds an added level of immersion and we wanna do that in the safest way possible. You can also bring your blank fire ammunition in a clear plastic container like a Ziploc bag that's easily inspectable by the cadre. So after your ammunition is inspected, he's going to check all of the magazines that I bring to get inspected here. So he's gonna go through my chest right here. We're just checking for live ammunition. So we'll inspect the person and their rucksack to make sure that they're not bringing any live ammo with their blank fire weapon. All right guys, so after all of the ammunition is inspected, we're going to perform a disassembly of the gun that you're bringing as well as a function check. So you're going to do a field stripping of the rifle or whatever other gun you're bringing in. You're gonna put it back together and then conduct the function check under supervision of the cadre. There it goes. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta beat them a little you bit. Gotta beat them a little, yeah. All right. Cool. And that is how you perform a disassembly as well as a function check on an AK rifle. All right guys, so after we do the function check, I'm going to tell the cadre the four rules of firearm safety. The first rule is don't point the gun at anything that you're not willing to kill or destroy. The second rule is treat every gun as if it is loaded. The third rule is know what is in front of your target as well as what is behind it. And the fourth and final rule is keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. All right, so here at Milsom West, we have a 180 degree safety cone, which is at a 20 foot distance. So Sean is currently about 20 feet away from me, and he is the closest he can be with me firing this gun. If I get closer to him, I cannot fire the blank fire gun, and that is just a safety rule that we have, and that goes for 180 degrees off the muzzle of your rifle. All right, guys, now that we've checked the ammo, I have shown that I have a knowledge on the weapon by doing a disassembly as well as a function check. I've also stated the basic firearm safety rules as well as an understanding of Milsom West safety cone. Now we're going to do an actual function check of the weapon and making sure that this thing actually fires the blank fire that I brought. Hey, test fire, test fire, test fire. That's how you do it. All right guys, now that I've talked about everything you should know about running blanks at Milsom West as well as the check-in procedure, let's check out some really badass gameplay that I got from this last event. And is honestly some of the best gameplay I could have possibly hoped for because spirit of the game on both sides was incredibly high. People were reacting to blank fire and some people were calling 
blank fire hits and it was a really epic battle and it kind of helped set the picture of this this was about saturday afternoon and i wanted to get like a kind of a recce force it wasn't a recce force it was more of a movement to contact force and i really wanted to scout out some land that was around my patrol base i didn't really know it was out there but i knew nato was out there somewhere so i brought around like 24 people with me and we did a movement to contact and we got into some pretty serious contact and it really turned into this really epic battle and uh can't wait to show it to you guys, so check it out. Who came through here last night? You did? Where was their patrol base at? Okay, so they're not out here anymore. We're gonna circle around this way. We hit the road here. Yeah. This road circles around, hits the back fence line and comes straight up. This road right here? Yep. This trail where the, dog, the yep. cows are at? All right, yeah, let's so go. If we go that way, if we just walk straight out this way, we'll hit the fence line. And just circle around? And come up and then come behind Okay, let's do that. Left, yeah, all right. Circle around right. Circle around right. Push up on the hill. Go, 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 go. Push up, push up, push up. Yeah. Let's check around the left side! Let's check around the left! Come on, get these guys over here! Oh, you got him! Right side, right side! Come on, back right here!
as you guys can see, guys were reacting to blanks incredibly well during that battle. Even though I kind of ran out of ammunition there towards the end, um, kind of like makes you understand of how quickly you will run out of ammunition. I think I brought like five mags out with me. I didn't really have that much blank fire ammo with me. So kind of used what I had and it was a ton of fun. Like kind of LARPing it out a little bit. Even though I was out of BB range from the enemy, I was still trying to kind of use cover. And I was actually seeing the effect that my blank fire was having on the enemy on their movement. And even some of the guys were, you know, calling hits. There was a group of dudes down in this bowl and I was shooting down in them. And it was like with an AK from that distance, they would definitely be hit. And it was really cool to see them realize that as well because they were not in cover. And some of the guys actually went down. And uh, I think that was pretty cool. Well guys, that is all I have for you today. On this channel, I've always tried to blend both the firearms community as well as the airsoft community because I have found that a ton of gun guys were once airsofters in the past or are still airsofters because it is a ton of fun. And I thought it was kind of cool like going to an airsoft event but still being a gun guy and being able to use a real gun in an actual like tactical manner because other than making noise, these things like I said have a ton of tactical uses out there and really helps add to the realism to the Milsom event. But Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Jean Operator or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com to find school shirts and merch, which helps out the channel. Also guys, if you want to support the channel even more directly, I got Patreon, helps me buy guns, gear, ammo, all the kind of stuff that goes into running a gun channel. And it'll get you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. But hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time.